Hi, Jackie Cardenas for Block Club Chicago. I'm here to ask a confirmation question. Uh, nine women were shot on the 1500 block of South Keeler early, early Sunday morning. Early this morning, according to Chicago police, a group of women were gathered in the 1500 block of South Keeler Avenue just before 1 a.m. this morning. Was it a birthday celebration? What was that gathering? I believe it was a birthday celebration uh, for one of the uh, one of the victims of the party that was attended was all female. Something has to be personal. Why would you just unload on a yard or a house full of women that was here on the outside celebrating someone's birthday? Gainer, two of those victims were transported here to Mount Sinai Hospital early this morning in critical condition, and we have learned that one of those victims has died from their injuries. Kanisha was a funny everything. She was so outgoing. She was the queen of the world. We want the name of the person responsible to come forward and turn himself in or her in. Unbearably hurt. Uh, that's my oldest story. Is there any evidence that uh, they can indicate that the victims were targeted because they were women? Right, we, we don't have any uh, evidence of that right now, but we're still uh, very early in the investigation, so we're looking at all avenues, right? In all, Chicago police say 271 people have been murdered so far this year, and there have been 1,074 shootings. Look, I, I knew what I was inheriting when I became the mayor of the city of Chicago. You can't get up. Let me go outside. You can't even go outside no more. It is heartbreaking that a mother has to bury her 21-year-old daughter that leaves two kids. That's heartbreaking. I have a 15-year-old daughter, and to think that I'll let her go out into the world and something like this tragically happen to have a good time at a luau. I'm heartbroken. What you got left, you just try and hold on to it as close as you can. Don't let your kids outside. Kanisha Gaines was a 21-year-old mother of two children who was described as a happy and outgoing person. Kanisha was a go-getter. She had two different career paths, one as a home healthcare worker and another as a hairstylist. As a stylist, she worked for herself and her business was called Cutie Collections. According to her website, she performed quick weaves, sew-ins, and customized wigs. She often posted her work online, as well as tips she used to help other stylists. Although Kanisha was young, she had a lot going on for herself. That's why many people are devastated about her loss. She grew up in a rough environment where tragedies happen too often. According to her mother, Natasha Graham, she was always a tough parent, but became even more strict after her 18-year-old son was fatally shot in 2019. Kanisha's 18-year-old brother, Keyshawn, was a victim of gun violence in 2019. Well, what you got left, you just try and hold on to it as close as you can. So I'm gonna continue to be the stronger and I'm gonna help my family and we're gonna make it past this. Her mother was so proud of the young woman Kanisha was becoming, but she did worry about her daughter a lot. Sadly, weeks before the tragedy, Kanisha was planning to move back home with her mother on the south side. I thought there was too much stuff going on. I wanted her to come back home, and she was actually preparing to do that, and we didn't even make it to the first. But unfortunately, she never got the chance. Kanisha was senselessly murdered at a birthday party by a group of masked men. <laughs> Oh.
Chicago police responded to 29 shootings over the weekend. And according to the uh, police department, there were 47 shooting victims, five of whom died from their injuries. And today at a North Lawndale church, the Chicago police department offering assistance to those impacted by a mass shooting that happened there yesterday. Absolutely, Anthony and Natalie, a horrible, heinous shooting here on the city's west side. In fact, many neighbors that we spoke to have continued to be stunned by the shooting that took place, um, mainly because most of the victims, eight of them were all women. Now, inside the Deliverance Temple of the Apostolic Faith Church right now are victim advocates, therapists, and detectives, all collaborating to bring this community answers fast. Overnight Saturday, eight women were shot while attending a Luol-themed party nearby. There's a coward amongst our community will take out their frustration and shoot women. Um, we're supposed to protect our women in our communities. You don't often, you know, this is not something that's normal where nine people are shot at, at, at one time. If it's your son, if it's your grandson, if it's your nephew, if it's your friend, if it's your cousin, we must speak out. These children, not only my daughter, but every child that got shot there, they deserve some type of justice. They really do because our kids, our teenagers should be able to go hang out. And really, guys, just so many questions remain about the shooting. My photographer and I, Todd, we've been walking around the neighborhood, knocking on doors, trying to speak with neighbors to figure out what exactly they know. More from Alderman Scott. She told us that the majority of the victims, if not all of them, were not from this neighborhood. Also, those victims' ages range from 20 to 33 years old. One woman that was shot was actually struck eight times that woman at last check remains in critical condition police do tell us that the shooters remain at large it was saturday july 29th 2023 when kanisha went to a birthday party celebration with friends the party was a hawaiian luau theme in chicago's north lawndale area everything was going fine at the party until around 1 a.m in the early morning Suddenly, a group of armed masked men turned up to the gathering in a jeep. They got out and sprayed the crowd with a hell of bullets, striking Kanisha in the face. Other women, said to be her friends, were also struck during the ambush. Unfortunately, the group of men were able to get away. What I gather that I, I heard that when they jumped out of the car, they said, we got you bees. Mm -hmm. So it was intentional. It wasn't like it was... Uh, a random. It was intentional. How, how large was the gathering that was going on? Uh, they were having a luau, uh, so I think it was a pretty, pretty big gathering, um, and I think it was majority all women. So it's, it's devastating. A 28-year-old woman was shot eight times in her torso. A 20-year-old woman was shot in her right thigh. A 24-year-old woman suffered a gunshot wound to her right wrist. Another woman, 28, was shot in her right knee. A 30-year-old woman suffered two gunshot wounds to her right shoulder and two more to her right arm. A 31-year-old woman was grazed in the leg and forearm. A 33-year-old woman suffered a grazed wound to the stomach. And another woman, whose age wasn't released, was grazed in the right arm. Kanisha was rushed to the hospital but sadly died. Despite the best efforts of emergency medics, police said the other women are expected to survive and will remain anonymous during this time. Authorities don't know what was behind the incident and have no one in custody for the shooting. This shooting left a 21-year-old woman dead and eight others injured. Our deepest condolences are with the family of the young woman who was killed and our detectives are working hard to identify and apprehend the people responsible for this shooting. We ask anyone with information to please submit an anonymous tip through cpdtip.com or contact Area 4 Detectives at 312-746-8252. Our crime victims advocates have been working throughout the past 24 hours to reach out to the victims and connect them with resources as they begin to process what happened. Crime Victim Services has also set up an assistance center that will open shortly at 1 p.m. and will remain open until 7 p.m. tonight at the Deliverance Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith at 1457 South Kaminsky Avenue. This assistance center is open to anyone who has been affected by violence, including yesterday's shooting in North Lawndale. Our crime victim advocates and our community partners are here right now are there, excuse me, there right now getting ready to assist anyone who needs support. 
When acts of violence occur, it's more than just direct victims and their families who are affected. This, vi this violence creates a ripple effect that can touch an entire community. This includes the children who heard the gunfire in their neighborhood or the family who lives down the street from where the shooting occurred and saw the aftermath. Though we know the trauma of violence never fully heals, our hope is that we can provide support and advocacy to those affected as they learn to live with the experiences they carry. I'll now take a question. Hi, Jackie Cardenas for Block Club Chicago. I'm here to ask a confirmation question. Um, so uh, nine women were shot on the 1500 block of South Keeler um, early, early Sunday morning. Um, but we don't know exactly um, you know, what the gathering was. Was it a birthday celebration? What was that gathering? I believe it was a birthday celebration uh, for one of the uh, one of the victims, but it was actually uh, one was a male, but we can't associate him exactly with that. But we did have a male who was in that area, and we're still investigating that part of it. Okay. Hi, I'm Terry Kushner, WBBM Radio. Um, about the Keeler shooting, um, I'm sorry. Was that you just said was the male one of the victims? Well, a male showed up at the hospital, and he said he was shot in that area. So we don't know exactly know, but we're treating it as he was shot somewhere in that area, although the party that was attended was all female. Do you think that, is there any evidence that, uh, anything to indicate that the victims were targeted because they were women? Because it appears that most of them are missing no. right, we, we don't have any uh, evidence of that right now, but we're still, uh, very early in the investigation, so we're looking at all avenues right now. Ms. Robinson, I want to see if maybe, maybe you could speak about, about women being victims of crime, females, them coming forward. Is that a more difficult thing? Is that a different thing? We provide services and we try and do outreach regardless of who that victim might be, so we're extremely open to whoever's a victim. Of course, historically, we had the domestic violence program where the majority of victims have been female. But as everybody hopefully knows right now that males and females can be victimized at the same time. Is it concerning that a group of women uh, possibly were targeted? It's concerning to me when anyone's targeted at a party where they just got together to celebrate each other. The fact that it was a group of women, we are having some gender-based violence services available in case the women come forward and they have issues specific to their gender. Since the incident, her family has spoken out several times about rumors and hoping someone would come forward about the incident. Here is a live video of a family member speaking out. I swear to God, these little girls playing in her face and I'm gonna play back. I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm gonna play back. Hello. Ain't no way my don't know a goddamn thing. Y'all know what the going on and don't nobody want to talk. Don't nobody want to say shit. Talking to Michelle, we don't Y'all weird as hell, but don't want to say nothing. Then a motherfucker go block me and she's like, what you, what you blocking me for? What you feeling some type of way? Because I'm feeling some type of way about my niece, for. Holla at me. Fuck out of here. Y'all know how I'm coming. I don't even do this laugh shit. The only time I get on laugh is when y'all make me feel some type of way. Stop getting on here talking about my niece and you know you ain't going to talk about what happened to her. Kind of weird to me how your weird block me though. How you block me and you mad because I feel some type of way, baby. Scratch your ass and get glad, bitch. I ain't gonna even lie to you though. Everybody know what it is with me. Y'all weird as hell. I swear to God, if it wasn't for Kanisha, I'd send this to the moon. She ain't got no best friend. All that shit dead. She got family in that shit. She ain't got no more friend that that's what it is because all y'all weird ass people y'all know what the f going on ain't nobody talking but y'all want to be weird on facebook making statuses and shit. i don't like none of y'all to be honest with you i wish my niece had a state against it stayed away from all y'all but she didn't she ain't listening to me but if she had to listen to me bro she wouldn't have been around she wouldn't have been around that now everybody can face their facts and all of that. We three for three, all of that shit. But a three for three ain't no snitching, bro. You ain't snitching if you tell them what happened to your three for three. 
She wasn't in the streets? Come on now, that's a different story if she was in the streets, bro. Come on, talk that shit, bro. She wasn't in the streets, y'all. Weird as hell, she wasn't in the streets. She ain't know what the fuck was going on. You put them up, you bring them up to a scene, you think they don't know what the fuck going on? Get the fuck out of here, bro. You weird as hell, G. She ain't know what the fuck was going on. Fuck out of here. She died because another decided to make a bad but sit bad decision and that backfired. That's what the fuck happened. Fuck out of here. I ain't no setup shit. I ain't never said motherfucker set my niece up. Let's be clear. While motherfuckers running around saying that shit, I ain't never say a motherfucker set my niece up. I said a motherfucker set that girl up. That's what I said. And it backfired. Nah, we can talk about it now. It's all out there now. Nah, let's be clear. Cause none of the bitches that was hanging with my niece standing in the crowd with her, she wants shut down. Shut the fuck up talking to me. What's up? I was humble enough. She gone in the ground now. What's up? Y'all real stupid. Real stupid. Right. Weird people. That is sitting up here talking all that weird shit. You are a best friend. You this. Y'all that. Y'all this. But ain't nobody came and talked to us. But I heard motherfuckers got pictures. I heard motherfuckers got I heard motherfuckers got text messages. Some old shit. Why we ain't get it? Why we ain't know? It's your weird ass out of here. I'm with all that today. With all that today. What's up? Got a whole screenshots in their phones, but I, I got a bag of motherfuckers for it. I got a bag of motherfuckers for it. I asked for this shit days. Motherfuckers said that shit in their phones since the day it happened. Motherfuckers ain't dropped shit up until I start begging for that shit. Fuck out of here. Y'all weird as hell. Fuck on. Don't get to telling me about how I feel, because I feel some type of way because y'all want to move in the right way. Man, they ain't gonna never tell the police. We have a better chance of finding this shit out ourselves. Motherfucker ain't gonna never talk to the police. Motherfucker scary than a motherfucker. Motherfucker talking about some, well, I don't want my name on black and white. What the fuck is you talking about? I'm tired of being humble. Fuck out of here. It is what it is. Damn, I'm gonna always scream all this. Best friend is best friend that. Get so weird. Um, I didn't hurt this shit from my. From the herself that's in the hospital bed still to this day. Yo, back though, I'm not trying to hear none of that shit. Motherfuckers talking about black and white. It's a difference in snitching and being loyal. So obviously you're not loyal to my sister, little girl. Obviously you are not. She ain't ain't no, you ain't got no loyal bone in your motherfucking body. Stop. If you ain't want to talk to us, you could have talked to the police, but you don't want your name. So you not shot for real. Your ass is grave. Cause I swear to God on my kids, on my dad, mother, on my daddy, mother saved your all day. I was on your all day. And I told your to your face when my sister was going in the ground, you were showing fake love. You ain't want to go with your mood. How you know what's up with me? You fake as hell, G, on my kids. I can't see you on no day. You talking about not today on no day, but you won't even come around right now on my kids. Literally. I don't feel that shit, bro. Oh, God, that's why I'm mad, TT. You should have let me go with my mood, G, because this bitch ain't even finna come back around. Oh, Jesus. This bitch ain't finna come back around. This bitch finna be high now. It was just a point of, why the fuck you blocked me? Why you blocked me? What you acting that's what I'm saying. You blocked me, too. You blocked me, too. Oh, God. At the end of the day, on oh, my kids, you can't say we acting funny. You can't say we bogus or none of that. Let me tell you why. Because you went to the hospital and talked to this girl for one and showed her all type of screenshots of texting you to come out. They know who did it or whoever, whatever. We don't know this. We ain't got this. You can't be.
be my sister, best Together. friend. And any rocking with you, I'm not rocking with them. Tied that behind this little girl right here. All you, what you talking about? Every last one of you. Every last one of them, I'm not playing. All that. At the end of the day, my mama died when I was 13, and I know how I feel to live without a mama. These kids, three and two. So they got a whole life ahead of them without a mother. Mama, ain't nobody going to treat them kids like they mama going to treat them because ain't nobody treat me how my mama would have treated me. You talking about, oh, yeah, we can do whatever. Me, I can do whatever about clothes. I can buy shoes, all that. I'm still not them kids' mama at the end of the day. I'm still not them kids' mama. I'm like auntie. And it ain't, it, that's just sad, bro. Y'all don't know where the my little sister can. Oh, some real shit. This girl bossed up when she had them motherfuckers. Her kids was her world. What is you talking about? Treasure was sad. All that day was sad. Her face, she cried all that day. Kimaria was sad too. But Treasure, that little girl, that shit gonna hurt when she get older, bro. That shit bogus. At the end of the day, G, you not loyal. At this time, authorities are asking anyone with information to please contact their local authorities. The day after the attack, community groups and police gathered down the block to offer crisis counseling and make police available to answer questions. The purpose of the temporary center was to help victims get on the path of healing. However, community members believe it would take a lot more to see change in Chicago. One woman says she used the services and she was pleased with it, but since it's only open for one day, some community activists say that's not enough. It, it makes a big difference if it's gonna be here and stay here. CPD says the center will address financial losses, help stress with therapy dogs, and victims can talk to detectives to follow up on their cases. This is an opportunity for us to get into the community and to expedite crisis services and referrals to crucial recovery services. But Holmes says since it's only open for one day, more needs to be done. I like the effort, uh, I like the support, but if it's just for today, ain't gonna work. Dog and pony show ain't gonna work. You guys probably already seen this story on our Instagram or our website. I wanted to make sure I do the visual portion because a lot of people ask me about information on this. This was a mass shooting that was not handled like the rest. I don't feel like this got the attention that it deserved. And I hope the victims are getting the help that they truly need. I hope that Tanisha's family received justice and I pray they get the answers that they need. Let's continue to use our discernment Let's stay aware. Let's stay alert. I thank you all so much for watching and I love you all dearly. With that being said, please don't forget to check on your loved ones. Good afternoon. Following yesterday's senseless act of gun violence, the Chicago Police Department's Crime Reduction Services team began the process to set up an assistance center that will be opening shortly at 1 o'clock today. After an incident of violence, victims most often have the need to feel safe that's most often accomplished by the arrival of police and by the provision of medical services. Following that are the next steps where crime victim services come into play. How is it that we can help that person or persons get on the path to healing after following a traumatic event? We're going to start to do that today by the opening of the assistance center. What is an assistance center? An assistance center is a designated space that offers services to victims, co-victims, family members, friends, and community members impacted by major incidents. This is an opportunity for us to get into the community and to expedite crisis services and referrals to crucial recovery services. Who's served by the Assistance Center? Today's assistance center has been activated to serve victims of this weekend's gun violence. We are also serving family and friends of victims, witnesses of the incidents, residents, and the affected community at large. We're able to serve others impacted by violence not necessarily related to the 10th district incident from this past weekend. What are some of the services that are provided? Immediate crisis counseling, safe space to ask a question, 
financial losses that may have incurred as being the result of being a victim of crime, we are able to complete crime victim compensation applications on site and begin that process. Address stress and just needing down and quiet time and maybe spend some time with the therapy dogs that will be present. Talk with a detective if you have questions about your case or if you have information and you would like to speak with a detective. If you're experiencing domestic violence and you want to talk to someone confidentially, we have certified domestic violence counselors on site. If as a result of the injury that you incurred, you need durable medical equipment, we're able to help facilitate that and expedite getting that equipment to you. How do you know if you need services? The best answer is, if you're asking yourself this question, please come out to the Assistance Center and we'll do a quick assessment to see what services are needed, even if it's only to express the concerns that you have and you need a safe space to share them. If you would allow me to quickly introduce our community partners who answered phone calls on this wonderful Sunday Chicago afternoon to answer the call and come up and support the Christ, excuse me, the Assistance Center, the Helen and Joe Foundation, Lutheran Church Charities Canine Ministries, You Can Community Services, and of course our Assistance Center host, Deliverance Temple of the Apostolic Faith Church. The need to feel safe is universal. In the case of a mass incident, finding answers can be overwhelming. The Chicago Police Department Crime Victim Services staff and our partnering agencies are available today to provide assistance. Our services are confidential, a police report is not needed. The Assistance Center opens at 1 o'clock and will run until 7 p.m. this evening at 1457. No appointment is needed. We look forward to seeing you this afternoon.